Hello and welcome to Explain Everything and welcome on our webinar on how to present with a digital whiteboard. My name is Bart, together with me is Kuba here. Hello everyone. We, I co-founded the company some time ago. Kuba joined us very early on. So we both co-created the software that we're going to talk about today. And you know, this webinar is for you to answer all of your questions. And there shouldn't be a, a question that we will not provide answer for. So, so let's make good use of our time and get this thing started. We have a few things on our agenda. We want to show you how to download the software, how to connect in order to present in an unfettered way, and some uh, tips and tricks how to actually do that so your presentation are dynamic, purposeful, meaningful, and make impact. Yeah? Right. So, uh, we're going to go through those uh, basics uh, regarding the downloading, connecting to external screen as we have here, and uh, presenting with them, uh, explain everything. But if you have any questions, use the Zoom chat or uh, join in our collaboration. We'll show you how to do it in a minute. And ask your questions here, and I'll be watching your questions and uh, sending them to Bart while he's uh, answering. And later on, we'll have a Q&A session where we answer, answer all of those questions, unless there's like a very important one that we'll answer it immediately. So feel free to use the chat or Q&A section in Zoom, and we'll be able to answer all of your questions. Great. Yeah, fantastic. So, so let's, let's start with how you can access Explain Everything. Explain Everything is a software that is primarily on mobile devices. It works both on Android and Apple operating systems. Um, of course, you can run it also in a browser. So today we're going to speak about those uses that require you to have a tablet, to walk around the class with a tablet and present that way. Although if there are some of you that want to present from the computer, let us know, we'll respond how to do that. But let's focus on tablets. Now you can easily find explain everything on the store i'm currently checking explain everything on apple store app store and there are here it is there's explain everything whiteboard that we're using today of course this button here says open because i have it installed but if you don't you can download the software here open it, and even try it out without committing to a trial period. On the Google Store, it looks very similar. You find Explain Everything Whiteboard, and there you go. Although there is no trial for Google, we're working on that. So once you have your software, it will look like this. You'll have a project screen, obviously I have a lot of projects here, but we'll take it from the, from, from the moment where you start creating new project. And I have this project. Uh, we, we, well, yeah. You might want to uh, turn on the tops and gestures and, and explain everything. Oh, yes, sure, yeah. Let me do it. So you see where I'm tapping and what I'm doing on the screen. Um, in general, yeah, yeah, yeah. Display on screen taps and gestures. There we go. By this, you'll be able to tell what I'm tapping. As you see, we're presenting through the broadcasted um, view to my iPad, and also you see us on the camera. You can move between those two views to basically see what we're doing. It's quite important when we'll show you how to how to connect wirelessly some of those two views might be not available at the moment yeah let, let's jump into that let's show how to connect wirelessly to a monitor or to the projector uh, using your tablet on both systems shall we sure so we have this uh, slide here to show you the scenario we're discussing here today. So, so let's say you're in a class, you're a teacher, and you want to present to students using uh, wireless connection. And there are two ways to do that. Of course, there are two systems. On iOS, the best way to do it really is to use Apple TV that you see here. 
So we have one here with us. We'll soon connect through it. Currently, I'm just broadcasting and using cable. On Google, you can use Chromecast. It's the same um, logic here. You have a device that is able to speak to your tablet and wirelessly uh, transmit video from it. There are, however, some differences in how application works with those um, devices. So in iOS, you have you have few more options. You can mirror your screen. So as you see here, this screen is mirrored. All the toolbars are visible also for those that are watching me going. You can have a second screen. So when you turn on the second screen, I'll try to show you that in a second after we connect through Apple TV. Those toolbars will be gone. So all everyone on the audience will see only whiteboard and your activity on the whiteboard, but not the toolbars. This is not something we will use today as we want to show you how to present and use the software. And there is also a presenter workspace. Oh, there's a typo, sorry for that that is visible here, where you can kind of like simplify your toolbar, your toolbar if you still want others to see what you're doing. So that's the presenter's toolbar. On iOS, it's already available. It's coming up on Android, should be available in about two weeks. So I saw the guys today talking about the release date. We cannot tell exactly when it's gonna be, but it's about two, three weeks, right? So these are the options. So why don't we try Apple TV for a moment? And for that, I will turn off the Zoom broadcast because one thing, if you will work with those devices, you must uh, remember that you can transmit um, your screen through one of the uh, possible, um, you know, to one of the uh, one of the destinations. So currently, I'm transmitting through um, Zoom here. So I'll stop this, and we'll dis disconnect my iPad from the screen again um, as well. And I will connect the screen to Apple TV to show you how to connect to it. You see the Apple TV behind us. I'll open my application, and in I explain everything. All you need to do is to swipe um, from the top right corner, open this center here, and click Tap Screen Mirroring, and select Apple TV that is available for you. And as you see, I just did that. And on the screen, you can see, explain everything uh without the toolbars that's the that's the uh, that's the second screen mode so when i move on the screen here when i move the screen here you see that happening wirelessly behind me so you can change if what is visible on the external display should mirror your screen or should be second screen and it's it's available in the options and it's also available when you connect. There's this uh, moment in time when at the top of the screen, this information pops up, you're in mirror or you're in second uh, screen mode, and then you can tap and change it. But that's basically it. You, you just use this center here, you, take, you, you choose screen mirroring, and you choose which device is available for you. So why don't we disconnect now from the screen mirroring and show that through Zoom. So I'll, again, switch the destination, share my screen through Zoom. Thank you. So you should see me sharing through Zoom now. And again, in order to activate unthreaded connection and broadcast through Apple TV, you just use screen mirroring option that you can access by swapping from the top right corner of your screen. Now, it's, I think it's even easier with, uh, with Google, or it's almost the same, because in Google, 
you have a panel that is accessible for you from the lower right corner of your tablet. So once you tap there, you should see this option here, cast. It informs you that Chromecast is available for you. And the Chromecast device must be connected to your uh, monitor in order to uh, be powered on and ready to use. Once you do this, you will have basically the same options, um, but without this second screen. You will, you will need to, the, the, when, you, when you present, others will see you mirroring screen. So this option is, is coming soon, but it's not yet available on Google platform. So these are your options when connecting. However, today, we have one more, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is a hidden option here. We're going to share with you the content using collaboration, that is using cloud. So not only you can teach Untethered using this connection with your screen or monitor, you can also broadcast or open your session for collaboration. And that's what I'm going to do presently with the session that we have here. So as you see, what, I'm, what you need to do is to tap this invite button. You see it in the top right corner. I'll just do it now for you to see the code, the, the, the connection code that you can use to, to join us on this collaboration. So as you see, project is coming up for us. We do have the code already. I will start this project. So what's happening is I had my local project on the device. I just launched this in the cloud. So each one of you can connect as you please. So I encourage you to do so. I'll show you the code again. So that's the connection code that you can use in order to join us on this session when, when, where we will explore options of explain everything and how to present with digital whiteboard in the classroom. And I see some of you already on. Hi, Carl, <laughs> good to see you. Now the collaboration is sometimes useful when you, we created this to have this opportunity for learning on a distance, right? Remote learning scenarios. But sometimes even in the class, it's useful for those that, let's say, can't see the screen too well because they sit in the back. I've heard the story of a teacher that used this mode, collaborative uh, whiteboarding for providing students with a uh, with the laptop or a tablet just uh, for the student to be close to the content that the teacher was sharing. So it's sometimes useful even on a, in, a, in a normal classroom setting. But for now, today, it's going to be very useful as we're going to practice, and you can practice with us as well using this cloud session, right? Right, and um, for those of you who are wondering, in order to join the project, sorry, I'm just gonna <laughs> bring myself a little bit more closer. Um, in order to join the project, you don't have to have an explain everything account. So say if you are a tutor that wanna connect or invite someone and, and teach them uh, over the distance, that's all that's possible and uh, we do not require uh, other people to have an account, just like you did with Zoom, right? You didn't have an account, or you, you maybe have, but uh, you didn't need to have it, right? So uh, just by clicking the link that I just sent you through the Zoom chat, you are able to join, even if you don't have that, and explain everything account. And also, you can just type in ex expo.ai slash code, and you'll be able to access this through your browser. Although, as you see here on the slide, we recommend to use Chrome browsers for now. It works in Safari well, but for now, we recommend Chrome as the main platform on which we, we develop. Right, and the uh, deep links, so-called deep links allow you, so if you are on a mobile device and click on the link, it, and you have explain everything on your device, it will open explain everything automatically and join the project. Fantastic. So now we all should uh, know how to connect and how to create project and connect to the monitor. That's the most important thing. 
let's focus on a presentation skills, right? So what would be first? I mean, there are many styles that you can um, present with explain everything. Some like to start with a, with a blank canvas, like I'll create now, just the blank canvas to draw on it while they're, uh, they teach. Others like to present having content ready. So I guess we could start by showing you how to prepare your content, right? Sure. So let's begin with that. And by the way, we're on slide two. For those that joined us collaboratively, you can watch us going on slide two now. So this is like the environment you would start with when starting with new version of new, new installation of Explain Everything. So let's imagine we're in the classroom and there's a material that you want to share with students. I have a book. Uh, from one of our co-founders, Rashawn Richards, on blending leadership. Let's 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 try to uh, simulate this uh, environment where we're going to speak about the belief systems and knowledge structures. You don't need any fancy gear to bring you in to the canvas. All you need to do is to use Add Media button. I'll show you where it is. Here's my pointer. <laughs> That's add media button. And with this button, you can decide what kind of content you want to bring to the canvas. And since I have a book with me here, we're going to make a picture. Why not? So yeah, if you could hold this for me for a second. Here's Kuba. <laughs> All right, let's make a picture of this visual here, thank you. Now, on in the lower right corner, you have use photo button. I'll use that. And what I need to do is to crop this. So I'll use a crop tool on the left side here. And I can do the cropping. Okay. I even can use this tool in order to remove unnecessary parts just to select freely what I want to choose. That's not ideal, but still, it's good for our demonstration, how you can bring in the content to the canvas. Of course, there are other ways how you can do it, because Explain Everything comes equipped with um, tools that allows you to, for example, remove the back one. Maybe we can, we can show that. Maybe that could be useful for you if you want to have something in a nicer, clearer way. So I'll do one more picture just to show you what is possible. We're using this book here. So again, I'll crop this. And with this, this tool here, I'm going to remove background. So I'll try to remove it not too much because I have a white background and white book that would be difficult, but I can remove, let's say, this yellow color here. Or even we can go crazy and remove the <laughs> entire book with the background and just leave blending, blending leadership. Let, maybe that would be the good way to go because of the background does not produce much contrast with the book. Let's take this. So as you see now, I took just the title from the book, removed the background. That's a nice trick, I guess, if you want to bring content easily to explain everything. Right, and as you see after, just after Bart uh, in, inserted the picture and the, the title, um, his tool automatically changed to the hand tool. So uh, for those who don't know yet, the hand tool is how you move things around on the explain everything canvas. So first part is add media on the top and the second part um, is the hand tool which allows you to move stuff with your fingers or with your cursor if you're on the, um, on the desktop. So you probably saw those those tabs Bart performed on the uh, on those objects where you saw him change their position, rotation, and and um, and size just with two fingers. 
which is very handy. So now you see me touching this um, how to move objects uh, text here, and I'm moving it around with the hand tool. Hand tool is actually visible here, right? You can grab objects, as Kuba said, with two fingers, and then you can scale or rotate it as you like. And the beauty of those tablets is that you can control that way many objects at the same time. So I can grab blend, uh, blending leadership with one finger, this picture here with another one, and just go crazy here showing you what is possible, right? If you want to record nice animation, you can <laughs> use that. By the way, we're going to have a webinar on the recording next week. So today we're going to just to focus on how to present without, without recording your animation. So that's the hand tool. Hand tool comes with, with a few options that allows you to, um, to do a few things, like you can, you can touch and hold in order to show inspector tool that has a lot of options. We won't be able to go through the um, list of options of inspector tool, but let's say that some of the content that you have on the screen, you want to restrict in order not to scale it, for example, right? Then you can press and hold the object, open the inspector and lock scaling. And that way, this object won't scale even if I move my fingers to the sides like this. Right, and as you saw with the, with the multi-touch um, devices, there's a slight problem of, you know, um, like messing around with the content, especially when you, have, when you can ro rotate and, and scale it as you wish with your fingers. And in order to say, you move the, this, this uh, Bart moved this image and it, it was skewed a little bit. And in order, because this is the question we, we get fairly often, in order to straighten an object, you just double tap it. So, so that would be difficult on this picture. We, we would not know how to straighten it, but let's say we want to straighten that one. And I encourage you, those that connected to us, to try to double tap this object and see what happens. With the hand tool, of course. With, with, of course, yes, with the hand tool. There we go. Yeah, exactly, yes, good. So I'll try to skew it again. And if we double tap it, it gets straight up, right? So that's a nice trick. So when you're working with the text like this one here, you can always get it straight in the same way. So that's a good tip. The other one that we usually recommend to learn is a triple tap, right? Yeah. That's kind of like an unknown tip for, for, for many of us. Right? Because it's an unusual gesture, but yes. yeah, it's very, very uh, handy. Especially when you present. So let's imagine that you want to have, let's begin with, um, you want to have those objects together, moving together as a group, right? You can straighten it up. And in order to connect them, you can use inspector tool, but you can also triple tap in the, in the area where they overlap. So that would be here. If we triple tap here, they will connect together. If we triple tap again, they will disconnect. So if you like, you can try to do that with those objects. I will duplicate them. There are more of us that, would, that might want to try that. And that's a, that's a nice trick if you're working with a lot of visual objects to group them together and move them as you want during your presentation. This is, this is yeah, unusual for those that got used to, let's say, PowerPoint, where all transmissions, animations, transitions, everything is ready. You just, you just click one button and it moves, right? Here, here's an environment for your dynamic presentation where you can kind of like, you know, adjust your content, your, the, the things that you're discussing uh, to the current situation in order to, to, to learn at your best. 
Right, it's a sort of a different environment. Uh, there's a reason why it's a whiteboard, right? Um, you know, presenting with a whiteboard is uh, vastly, vastly different from, from a regular presentation. Uh, we think of it as a place where you are actively participating in the explanation process and it can adjust to your audience. It's not like you have a slide and everything's there and it's not really very engaging because everything you prepare is there so <laughs> you're not really you know every information you you don't have to decode that where whereas if you provide an explanation with the drawings moving things around and then so on and so forth with the dynamic content it is vastly more engaging so um regarding the annotations i, I think it's a uh, as we spoke about the um, grouping i think it's a great moment to to um mention the auto, auto grouping of annotations and explain everything. So while you're that's like, very technical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but, but that's how it what it boils down to. But essentially, it's very very simple. So, but say, it also comes with this nature of dynamic presentation because you know think of this environment as something that mimics like a table on which you try to persuade someone using just a piece of paper and a pen. This uh, rectangle here and it's fixed, right? I can remove this annotation here and write ABC here and it will stick to it. I can write something else on this one, D, E, F, and it will stick to it. So this is what Kuba referred to auto grouping because in reality, what we're doing here in technical terms, we're grouping those objects together. There are two objects. There's this material on the underneath, and there's this writing above it. And they formed a group when they wrote, when we wrote on the, uh, on the, on the object uh, below. Then this group is formed. So that's, that's actually something you can also practice triple tap on, right? Yeah. You can triple tap ABC, and it will disconnect from it. So you can reposition those things that you put on your content as you go. Triple tap again, and it joins. So that's actually very useful where you're presenting with kind of like a slides or PowerPoint. Maybe let's show you how to do that. Because usually when you bring in content that is ready made as a slide, you might want to annotate it, highlight some parts of it, maybe copy some parts out. And this is exactly something that we'll show you now. And again, for this, we're going to use add media button. I'll just move this away. And with add media button, you have this option to bring files as well. So I'm going to use files and there's a lot of and possibilities you can bring in your files from all major cloud destinations. So I'll, I'll choose Dropbox. I'm sure I have something there. And in those files, we're going to find a PDF on different forms. Where was it? different forms of presentation. Let's look for PDF. No, I lost it. But you have any PDF to share? <laughs> oh, yeah. Massive Shoot. amounts of PDFs yeah. <laughs> with, with our documentation. But <laughs> um, I think it wasn't in the about paper, I think, right? Like, uh, really? yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Maybe it was removed. 
But anyhow, you, we can pull any PDF from, from the web or just simulate that by adding here additional piece of content that will look like a PDF. Let's do that for the sake of time. So that's my PDF and it has some images, right? That's my document. If you're presenting your documents, if you're adding them to explain everything, you can actually decide how many, how many pages and how you want to put them in to the canvas, right? That's the option that you have when inserting PDFs. And Kuba, if you could find some and share with me, I'm happy to oh, yeah, I got put one. them in. Yeah, I got one. Yeah. So maybe AirDrop. Sure. That's also a good trick uh, to learn that you can share contents and uh, wire contents from other participants in the network as you go. So as you see, Kuba just airdrops a document to me. I can accept this document. I have an option to open it and explain everything on the top. As I do, as you see, I see the list of pages from that document. It's quite long, 56 pages. And I can select which of those pages are going to be put on the canvas and how they're going to uh, be inserted there. So I'll choose to, to select just some of them. So I choose to deselect all. And I'm going to select first, uh, maybe introduction here, second, and third. So what are those options here, Kuba? Well, uh, you can, as, the, as you insert a document, so a document for explain everything can be uh, anything that's a PDF presentation, a Word document, um, what else is there? Um, I PowerPoint. W, PowerPoint, IWB, Keynote. Keynotes. So uh, all, these, all these file types of files are supported in, in explain everything and you can add them to your canvas. So by tapping on the mm, layout options, you are able to either insert them to a single slide in one of those layouts, so like a grid, or there. They can be stacked horizontally, vertically, or you can select the last option, which adds them as separate slides. And so it will just put one page on uh, um, each, each one page separately on a single, on a single slide. So. so why don't we go with stacked? stack three pages out of 56 and here you have those three pages now the there's a trick that we can show you now because there's a problem we have a white background and three white pages they don't look nice on that background right there's a trick to it that we can share with you if you want to present in a single slide those three pages should have like a border to them you can in the settings of explain everything make it so all the content that you'll put in will actually have a border around it. And it's visible, uh, let me see, add shadow to new objects, that's, that's here. So I'm going to add this option, sorry, add shadow to new, to new objects for images, view, and documents. And Kuba, if you could um, you provide me with this document again, I will delete those three pages or I'll ju just delete two of them to show you the, uh, the result. So now I'm going to take just first um, the table of contents. Okay, thank you. So here on the right, I have pages that were brought in previously, and on the left, I have pages with shadow visible and that's what, that's how we can have a nice border when you're presenting on a single slide different pages and when the background is the same color as your content that you bring in now of course there are many that like to change the style during their presentation so you can also change the background to let's say let's change it to black how we do that we go to the slides order and as you see, our presentation has three slides. And I'm about to change the background for the third, for the second slide that we're on now. And there's a button here that once I tap, I can select the background color. So for the sake of contrast, I can choose black. 
And there you have it. All right. Fantastic. So let's also show how you can use slides in order to, to divide your content. So Kuba, if you could provide me with this PDF one more time. Sure. <laughs> Thank sure. you. Sure. <laughs> For some, uh, using slides in presentation is cool. That's why I explain everything comes with slide divisions. There are many of, oh, thank you. There are many of users that don't use slides at all, but for those that would want to divide their content to the slides, I'll just show you how to do that. So currently I'm going to um, take four pages out of this long document, but instead of putting them onto the canvas on one slide, I'll choose separate slides that you mentioned uh, previously, and I'll do insert. And as you see, the presentation now has some new slides. Because I was on a slide two, the presentation expanded, and the last slide, slide number seven, this is something that we had as a slide three, but after inserting a new four pages, it became number seven. And now we can move with slider, a slight uh, cha changing buttons on the lower right corner between those pages and present that way. Okay, great. The other thing that is quite useful when presenting with explainer everything is that you can cut out elements of those objects that you put in while you go. So for example, if we would discuss this, um, this visual here, figure one, and we want to take it out of this page, you can easily do that with a cutout tool. So what you need to do is to activate this tool. I'll show you again using my Need arrow. You can use cutout tool in order to cut this object out, like this. And we just crashed. <laughs> oh really? Oh really? That's how things happen sometimes when you so, present live. <laughs> while while we reopen the project, uh, we got a question from Carl Hans Martin, and the question is. Is it possible to change the background color of only one slide? Very good question. I believe so. Let's let us try. So we were showing how to cut out here on the slide number five. Yep. And let's say we want to change the background of that slide. If I select this single slide as slide number five here, and go to the background color and choose yellow. Now the background of that slide change, but the remaining slides have black in the background. So as you see, you need to go into the slide sorter, select a single slide and change the color of that slide. If you want to select slide, and then the color of all slides in the presentation would change. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so let's return to cut out tool. Sorry for interruption. It must have been memory on my device because we're working on a session here. Everyone is on the session. If you had no interruption, that means my device failed. So sorry for that. We're doing quite a lot of, on those tablets. I, I think everyone was there. I, yeah, I, was, yeah, yeah. I was in the session. That was my was connected, so. I still love it though. So cutting out is easy as selecting content. I'm going to take out this image from the page. I just did that. So as you see, I took a piece of a page and this is a very useful tool when you're presenting. I took a piece of a page just out of the page by replicating it. We call it cutout tool, but it's actually replicating uh, tool to replicate content. I can again do that here by replicating this quote and put it aside. 
And there are many ways you can use it. Uh, you can even try to pre-select the content. If you double tap on the cutout tool, you can, you can select your content uh, in a very precise way. Let's say I'm, I'm going to cut out only United Kingdom and Quebec from this figure here. And I did just that. Right? So that's the way how you can cut out content if you like. So when presenting with um, materials, you can be very dynamic. And this dynamic nature of explain everything is also enhanced by the use of the Zoom tool. As we mentioned, this canvas that we're operating on is unlimited and we can show you that just now. So let's say I'm going to zoom out and zoom in again. So it's up to you how you want to arrange the space. Sometimes it's good to have an assets on the sides when you're presenting to bring them to the canvas as you go. It creates a, of this style of very, you know, uh, dynamic presentation where you, you're ready with the content for the question to arrive. And if it arrives, you just bring in the, uh, the asset that you have. We'll show you how to prepare for such situations. So let's say I want to have this, this figure here ready if any questions would arise during my lecture. I can put it to the clipboard and have it stored there to be used at any point of time. How to do that? I will select this uh, figure here with an inspector tool. So again, where is the inspector tool? It is here. So I'm going to select this with inspector tool and use option add to clip part. And after doing that, this object will be available for me in the clipboard section. It's actually here. The clipboard is large. There are many symbols that you can use, but the first uh, part of the clipboard shows your custom elements. So here's where this object is stored. So let's say I'm on the first slide presenting to you. I need this figure here. No problem. Click Bart. Bang. I have it. Easy as that. So in terms of tools that you use for presentation, I guess we should spend some more time on drawing. What do you think? Um, well, drawing, uh, sure. I, I think we kind of mentioned that a little bit earlier in regards to how things stick, stick to each other. But yeah, I think annotation and, and highlighting on, on that document could, could work. So this is one of the, one of the elements like, we, like we've shown before. Uh, things stick, stick uh, not things, but the drawings and annotations stick to underlying documents and other objects. So the way you can bring attention to details on a certain element or a document or a presentation, um, you simply use the draw tool or, or the highlighter. Uh, they are right below the hand tool, as you can see, Bart just uh, selected the draw tool, and now he just annotated that. So he can now move around the document or just zoom in, zoom out, or focus attention on that particular element, and those annotations will stick to the document. So this way, um, you don't have to really worry about, um, um, you know, thinking about um bringing additional stuff you just annotate that live and then it sticks to the document and it's dynamic and it allows you to to uh to focus attention on certain elements you can also and, change colors of that as you go you can reposition the uh the toolbar for uh, for drawing but remember at any time when you're using drawing or highlighting, it creates new objects. So when I select those, you see by those frames that we actually have a piece of separate objects stacked together, grouped together, that you can ungroup and group again with the triple tap. 
So that's one way to focus on certain part of the material that you, pr you present. The other would be to use uh, laser pointer, I guess. Right. <laughs> that's something. That's something we we included in in explain everything. Just just for like bringing the attention to uh, certain elements. I, I, I as if you you would do that with a regular whiteboard or a presentation. Um, so. As you can see, because it's not it's not going to be immediately visible to you right now, because Bart's presenting with the taps and gestures turned on in the in the in the settings there, so you can follow his all, all of his moves. But if you don't have that turned on or uh, are you using the second screen option, you can select laser pointer, and this will display a laser pointer underneath your finger, so your audience will see that. If you're in uh, in our collaboration. In our uh, project currently, you will see only the only the cursor, right? So it works essentially like the laser pointer. So you're probably used to that. So yeah, that's true. That this um, symbol that shows where I'm pointing is actually covering the laser pointer when I use my pen. But there's an offset, so I can tap with my finger here, and you see the laser pointer above that. So that's how I can present with laser pointer. Yeah, and usually people, when presenting, they start with with highlight with, with laser pointer. During our webinars, we we tend to close with laser pointer because we like to emphasize the dynamic nature of explaining everything, where you can bring in your your content, you can cut it to pieces, you can use it in different scenarios, you can dynamically answer questions. That's what we encourage you to do when you teach with software that allows you for for that, yeah. So, okay, so we spoke about the hand tool to manipulate objects, laser pointer, we, we covered annotations. Maybe we should speak more about the text tool before we open for questions. Sure. So the, the text tool is essentially a text box that you can insert uh, to your presentations, to your projects. Uh, once you select the, the, the text tool there, you are able to tap on your canvas and then it will insert a text box. I think, oh no, it's blue, okay. So by tapping on the color below, you'll be able to change the color. And by tapping the uh, text tool again, you are able to change the font and, um, and the alignment options. They, they are below there. Um, you cannot see the, the, the keyboard rolling out because Bart's using a uh, um, keyboard that's connected to his iPad. But if you use I can a, show that. I can try to show that. Right. There you go, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's how it would work if you were using only, only your, um, your mobile device. Um, so, and if you tap the text tool again, there are some uh, formatting uh, and font options underneath that. Oh no, oh, no sorry. Um, I was thinking about the previous versions. <laughs> it's, they are below, right? They are below the, 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 the keyboard, sorry. Web version. Web version, if you're using web version of explain everything, they are under the second tab on the on the text tool. So the text tool during your presentations is used mostly when you prepare content if you want to have, let's say, titles. So so even when you look at the presenter modes, we don't show the text tool there at all. You're limited to draw tool, eraser, and laser pointer. And also and also you can change slides back and forth. And pan around with the zoom tool. But the text tool is sometimes useful. And now, during this part of uh, our meeting, we encourage you to ask us also questions. If you like using text tool, you can put them into the first slide of our uh, presentation, shared cloud session. So if you'd like to see how the text tool works, you can put your questions in writing here or just send them through chat uh, to Kuba so we can respond. Sure. So this is a Q&A mm -hmm. section. We can, while you're typing in or just uh, putting in your questions, we can sh talk a little bit more about um, the recording, which is not really about, uh, doesn't really relate to presenting, but it's a very mm -hmm. neat feature if you want to expand your presentation. So. Um, if you have any questions right now, please use the Zoom chat or use the uh, Canvas, and we'll go through the tips about recording your presentation. It's just a short uh, introduction because 
um, as you go, as you present, you are just able to tap the record button on the bottom. So as you do, it will start recording your, the whole thing. And then after you're done, you tap stop, and then you, you, everything you said and everything you did on the canvas will be recorded um, in your project, which you can then export as a video. Um, there are a couple of ways you can export that, that but this is really useful for uh, sharing your presentation for those who couldn't, couldn't attend, for example, or for participants who want to revisit things you, you've talked about. One of the scenarios we very often see from um, users uh, of Explain Everything is that they just start a lesson, hit record, go through the whatever document they want to bring in and talk with their students or um, other teachers. And then they will just stop on the, at the end of the lesson and share the video, re-edit it, and just um, uh, you know, share it with, with others that couldn't attend or just post it on YouTube, um, create a blended classroom, create a flipped classroom. Uh, that's how usually uh, it is used in regards to live presentation slash creating videos. It just very not neatly merges itself. Um, so um, all you have to do is just the press record button and then stop at the end. We'll fully cover recording during our webinar next week. So if you're interested in that, uh, we encourage you to sign up for this. For now, we'll just show you how this could work during your live presentation. As Kuba mentioned, when you press record here, software starts recording your movements and what you're saying. So I'll just zoom in to this. Let's say that's a document and say, okay, so I believe this is important and that is important. And this is what I want you to remember from our lecture. Everything I did is captured by Explain Everything. So when I stopped recording of this 20 minute recording of mine, you see my actions and highlights visible here in the track. I can play it back. And now it plays back for you. So everyone that is connected to us got brought to this first slide when I did my, where I did my recording. Of course, audio is not here because we're using um, this Zoom connection. But if you would do it for yourself, Explain Everything will also capture your audio. So as you see, I just created a very short clip that I can export as a movie later on. So if you want to have your uh, presentation recorded, just do it that way. Remembering, however, that the recording is slide dependent. So what that means is that if you look at the slide sorter now, the first slide of seven has recording. The remaining slide, they don't. That means if you're switching slides during the presentation, it might be tricky for you because the recording will remain on the slide on which you are presenting. So try to remember that, that the recording is slide dependent. And it's best to present from one slide having your, all of your content put on that one slide. Then you start recording, go through the whole thing, and it's all good. If you want to change slide, slides, please keep the linear order so you go from slide one to slide seven, recording what you say on each of those slides. All right, we, we've got a question from the bar. Okay. Um, uh, and it goes like this. I am beginning to use this in my online course. When we, uh, I tried to insert a YouTube video, the video showed, but there was no audio. So my question is, um, did you, mm -hmm. uh, was it a video file or was it a video in the browser? Because um, that might be the reason why um, it was not, um, uh, in the video, but there is there's one one little thing that when inserting a video, so because we did, we didn't show how to insert a video or is, that it is possible, um, but um, if you um, do, we have a, like a like a video file, um, like a short one, or so when you insert a video to the um, explain everything project it still needs to, the project still needs to be recorded. So 
this means that we, we can kind of emulate that right now. That's the video. Right. That's the video, right? So let's assume we don't have any recording yet. So after Bart presses the main record button there, yeah, he also, also needs to press play on the video on so the video plays. object. So, so it, it plays, plays. Right. right? So and right now everything's recorded. Uh, everything where Bart does will be recorded in the pro project. So all those scrubbings that he does on the video and so on and so forth will also be recorded. We don't have audio in this particular video, but as you can see in the timeline of Explain Everything project, everything he did was recorded. So every action he performed was recorded. So in order to capture video that you've inserted and explain everything, you need to record the project, which displays the video. So that's the that's the logic behind it. So like it's like you know you're capturing what is happening on the screen, and if you play the video, you'll capture how this video plays. That's the logic, right? You can bring it by the same logic, sound files, and play them. Uh, and loop them as well as videos, right? So it's quite powerful, but the logic is it's it's different than what you would expect from let's say video editors. Yet this is a whiteboard where you can bring anything, and it's up to you how to master how you want to orchestrate those contents for best explanation that can, that you can provide with the digital device. All right. So uh, the bar says uh, it was in the browser. So. Regarding using um, browser videos, so explain everything. Add media button. So if you press the add media button there, there's a browser, right? And the thing is, about the browser is that um, it cannot be really captured as if you were uh, recording your screen um, directly, right? So um, let me, uh, I want to put it in, in, in simple words. It, there, is a, there, is a, there is a limit on how much, uh, on um, how many times a browser can be captured while re project is recording, OK? Because, and that means that the, the dynamic content that you often see, say like on YouTube, um, will not be able to, you know, it, will, it won't be recorded as dynamically as it displays in your project. Okay, this is this makes it, um, uh, well, it's it's not very, I don't want to say uh, self-explanatory, but uh, we, we can we can I guess we can, we can deal with that. So so maybe we can um, demonstrate explain that. how it what what happens underneath when you're using your browser. When you're recording with explanatory, what you're doing with the browser, what software does, it it captures changes in the browser as frames, and the frame rate of that will always be lower than the frame rate of the video that plays in the browser, if that makes sense. So our recommendation to record videos that you like to have on a whiteboard is to have them as video files, and there are many ways. You can download videos from YouTube. There are many tricks tricks to do that. You can check them online. You will have no problem finding your way to download a piece of video that you can put in to explain everything. And then, once you have it, you can do as I did. You can put it as a video and, yeah, have it as a piece of your explanation. Oh, and the, the, there, because... Um... There might be a problem with uh, with the audio. I mean, you, you you need to make sure that your your um, your microphone is on uh, when recording a videos like that, right? So the, this this will make sure that the, the audio is also recorded. And while you are uh, using videos and recording at the same time, it is very um, useful to know that for the best effect, you use headphones so that there is no echo. Right, because if you if your device um, records sound, it will record both your voice, your video, and the video that's playing at the same time in your project. So, but no worries, the, the, all of that we can explain during the webinar on recording. We'll make sure to explain this audio, video mixing things because there are many things you can use to your benefit. Explain everything is quite powerful in terms of recording, but we 
assume that most of you when presenting won't use recording. So today we're just hinting that it's possible. You can try that. And if you would have more interest into that scenario, we encourage you to reserve a spot for next week. We have two webinars on recording for two different time zones. I'm sure we'll be able to explain everything related to recording. Right, and Deborah, if you, if you um, find this problem again, please reach out to, to, to us uh, to uh, uh, support us to explain everything dot com with the details on how you, 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 or what you want to achieve and how you did that, and we'll be able to help you uh, with that if you encounter this problem again. Absolutely. And um, so we have another question from Carl Heinz Martin. Uh, I prepared a presentation in Explain Everything using Ninja Mode. When I mirrored it, there was more to see on the second screen than I had on my iPad screen frame. Right. How is that possible, and what do I have to do? So, ah. Uh, yeah, so let me let me try to tackle that. So so your iPad screen has proportions four to three, while display that you might use as a second screen had a different proportions, so let's say sixteen to nine. That's typical for uh, TV displays, sixteen to nine. And in that situation, in that situation, this is what happens. This additional content of the slide can be visible on the external display and won't be visible on your iPod. So that's the situation. And uh, how to go about this? If you there are a couple of ways, actually. Right. What, what would you recommend? So that so um, if you want to adjust your project to because um, you were saying you were using ninja mode um, so I wonder how how exactly that that went but let's let us go through through the motions and 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 what I would do when presenting explain everything uh, and I knew that this is going to be 16 per nine is first I would set my projects to be 16 per nine which is right. um, which is available here so when you press on the um, the name of the project and then select frame options. Here you can set your frame to either a la la landscape or a pro uh, portrait and then frame aspect ratio, right? So here I would set it to 16 per nine and then um, I would connect to uh, the external screen and see if what was the difference. And then there, there are another set of options that you can use, which is like an advanced, uh, I would say, options. And if you go to settings, and um, there are display settings right here, and there's a fit inside, a fin, sorry, fit inside external screen. So here you select what should be the main axis that explain everything fits into right the, your screen and this will help you um set it up so that the, the red frame won't won't appear right or the the stuff inside the red frame on your ipad uh will, will be displayed on the screen however uh, there are some like uh, device specific settings on screens and um, and TVs that you might also want to look into. Uh, there were a couple of occasions where we run into this problem with explain everything. Well, we were presenting on the, on, um, on the conference and there was a, a, a TV and the stuff wasn't really fitting, you know, the red frame. Mm -hmm. And it appeared that the TV had a setting where it would, stretch the screen because it for some reason that the, there was a setting and on the this tv happen, yeah. mm -hmm. and so you you might want to look into that too in order to adjust uh, uh, the frame of the view from explain everything onto the tv it it has this like three dimensions right yeah many things can happen in the process of broadcasting your screen yeah but essentially yeah, that's a, that's a good explanation. I don't know if you see, this is a very small icon here, but when you change the setting, it also reflects what should happen on your external display. So yeah, hope that 
solves the problem, let us know if it works. If not, please contact support. We can, we can try to uh, help you when, try, when finding solution to that. All right. Any other questions that we can answer today? Um, there was no more questions, so I guess we can wrap, wrap it up. Fantastic. And we mentioned about the webinar recording. We're also going to have one on feedback uh, loop and assessment of just about time, 10% of battery left. So, so if you're interested in how to exchange projects back and forth with students to have a, a feedback loop, we're happy to, to speak to that uh, topic in a week of uh, in two September. Weeks. In yeah, two yeah, weeks. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. In two weeks. So next week is the recording and video editing uh, and animations and so on. So for the explainer videos, basically, uh, that we want to cover. And the week after is the week for uh, assessment and feedback. Fantastic. And thank you for joining today. It was great to, to collaborate with you on our session and hope to see you soon. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. See you. Bye. See you.